Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. And if you're joining us for the first time, we extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. There is so much to pray about. We want to pray for our nation. We want to pray for our local community and region. We also want to remember Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. And lastly, we want to remember our brothers and sisters around the world. Perhaps you have a special unspoken request. It's a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for the abundance of all things. Father, we pray for our nation. We pray for those that are in authority. Father, we pray for the influence of the word of God, the spirit of God, and the church of the living God upon this nation and the direction of this country. Father, we also pray for our local region here and pray that you'll continue to open up doors of utterance. We pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out your virtue, your power, and your presence. And lastly, Father, we remember our brothers and sisters around the world and pray that you build a hedge of protection around them. We ask all these things in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, Amen. I want to direct your attention this morning to a familiar passage of Scripture, the book of Galatians, chapter number 1, and verse number 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert, everybody said pervert, the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. There are some things that will never change. There are some things that will never change. And this important passage of scripture there are some biblical expositors that believe that this was Paul's thorn in the flesh, that there were, uh, there were Jews that were following the Apostle Paul around in his missionary journey, whose mission was to subvert the work of the gospel after the Apostle Paul would preach, after he would make disciples, after he would preach the gospel that there were some Jews that were going behind him uh, attempting to uh, subvert the work of the spirit and the work of the gospel. Um, whether that is the case or not, this particular passage of scripture is so emphatic and so clear that although that there would be some that would pervert or change the gospel, um, that the gospel never changes. Uh, um, incredible, incredible, the day and hour in which we live, because there is a message of change that is resounding through the media. The propaganda is, is suffocating. It is suffocating. And if you're weak, if people, if people are weak and they are, they are not, they are not resourceful, in, in getting to the bottom of things and getting beyond the masquerade and getting beyond the curtain. They will be swept by the propaganda of our hour and the propaganda of our age. But may make no mistake about it, the gospel will never change. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse number six, calls it the everlasting gospel. And so... This is not only a good gospel to live by, but it's a good gospel to die by. But we are living in the hour of change. We're living in the hour of change. And make no mistake about it, there are spiritual agency. I love 
the fact that the Apostle Paul talked about an angel. Because in 2 Corinthians chapter number 11, we see that no marvel for even Satan himself is able to manifest himself as an angel of light. He's able to come as an angel of life, light, Joseph Smith. And yet the whole purpose is to change. He wants to change the gospel. He wants to change how people are baptized. He wants to change how people, the evidence of people being filled with the Holy Ghost. He wants to change what godly living looks like. I want to tell you one of the incommunicable attributes of God is the fact that he is immutable. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. Um, but he does not change. Hallelujah. Did you? Bible said that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. The church is not going to change. We are not going to change. We're not going to change how we have church. We're not going to change how our lifestyle. We're not going to change our doctrine. There are some things that are ironclad. They are forever settled. And with some of the things that are taking place in our culture right now, with um, and this is not a political uh, deal at all. It's just it's just where we are in our culture today, and we're we're part and parcel of this. But the government making certain mandates, and this is mandated, and that is mandated, and this is mandated. You can go ahead and do your mandates, but there just are some things that are not going to change. That are more bedrock. That are more foundational. That have more permanence and have more relevance than some mandate um, that is that is handed down to us. I'm thankful for this passage of scripture. I was just talking to somebody this morning, very intelligent person that uh, was talking to me about reasons why they don't go to church. And you know, there's too many clicks and there's this and there's that and there's this and there's that. And time did not allow us, but I, I tried to explain to him. I said, if you don't, if you if you're not introduced into this correctly, everything else, everything else is wrong, and everything else becomes more of an enculturated prerogative, which I don't like this, I don't like the cliques in church, I don't like this, and and, and our misconceptions can be based on on fallacy, and they're not even based on reality. The apostolic message is first brought to human beings through the power of the gospel. It is, it is presented to us salvifically. It is presented to us salvifically. When I was introduced to the gospel, I was just a sinner. And I received a Bible study on salvation. You have to get into this correctly for this to have the panoramic beauty, the, the, the intricacy of the Word of God and the, the panoramic beauty that encompasses all of the covenants and all of the dispensations and, and all of the everlasting promises and all of the purpose of the church and the purpose of Israel. And, and it's just, it just becomes magnificent. But you have to come into this correctly. And the Apostle Paul is saying here that this gospel is not going to change. And yet there is an attempt to change it. Why? Because the spirit of this world is trying to change everything. It's trying to change it. You're not a biological male anymore. Perhaps you're actually a woman in a man's body. Listen, it's a bunch of hooey. It's nonsense. It is absolute. The spirit of this world is change but there are some things that will never change. But when you become a recipient of the true gospel, you will change. But it will not be an enculturated, societal, pressurized change or else. It will be a change that's brought about by the power of God that is now alive in a person's life where they are transformed by the power of God. Nothing is more beautiful, nothing is more wonderful, nothing is more glorious. I am a champion for that kind 
of a change. So make no mistake about it. We are living, if you could, if you could somehow encapsulate all of the turbulence, everything that's going on in our world and all of the chaos and, and it is seeking to change, change. But make no mistake about it. Right in the middle of this incredible turbulence of change, there are some things that will never change. And you and I represent that. God bless you. Have a blessed day. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.